I've been using DaVinci Resolve for many years, not only to edit my movies, my, my projects, but also doing all my color grading inside of, of this program. Lately I've been using curves extensively because I've realized that there's a very interesting relationship between contrast and highlight and shadow roll off. And in this video, I will explain exactly what I'm talking about. Let's jump right into DaVinci Resolve and I got two examples here on my timeline. This is from my latest short film, Together, and you can see that we shot this in log profile with a Sony A7S III recorded with a Ninja in ProRes RAW and then converted to Cinema D with the, the app called RAW Converter, yes. When you start working with log footage like this, it's all flat and without any contrast, right? So how do we add contrast to this image? The most basic way to add contrast with a curve is just to extend these points at the top and the bottom. But now you can see that we're getting quite a lot of crushed blacks here, crushed shadows. And if we take this example, we'll start to clip the highlights here. So instead of adding contrast with this method, some smart person came up with the S-curve. And why do we want to use an S-curve like this? Well, that is because now we're actually compressing the shadows and also the highlights in our image. So now we're not clipping any highlights and we're not clipping any shadows. So that's why the S-curve is a better way to add contrast to your image. And we have contrast and pivot here in this page under color wheels, primaries. You don't have that granular control that you get from using a curve like this. You can really go in and choose where you want to roll off the image and expand the middle range and how it will roll off into the highlights. So that's why I think curves is a better way to add contrast to your image because you get really fine control over the image. Also, by rolling off your shadows and highlights, you will actually also desaturate these regions of your image because when you compress the shadows, there will be a lot less difference between the channels in this area. So that makes this darker parts more desaturated. And the same holds true for the highlights. Once you're finished with your curve, but you think that this is a little bit too contrasty, you can always go back and ease up the contrast by, by playing with the lift gamma gain control. So let's say if I, I lowered the gain and just pull up my lift a little bit, so now I get a little less contrast the image by, by using these controls. Let's even try this one more time to make another node and compress my shadows and raise my midtones so that the midtones can roll off into the highlight part of this image. Let's see what we get. It becomes more, much more contrasty. So let's do something like this. It's a pretty dark and exciting image. Perfect for horror. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's go back to the original like this. Okay. So let's try this on another example here. First, I will just make sure I am in range so that I have a good starting point here. Now let's go in and play with the curves. So I'm gonna try to raise up my shadows a little bit to compress it. And let's see where we want to put our upper point here, maybe something like that, and then compress the highlights. Now let's play around and see what we get. I think that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can just find another sweet spot in the lift gamma gain here. Maybe that's a little bit better and roll it off a little bit of a dark and moody feel. Ooh, scary. Nice. So, so to recap here, the S curve contrast is a way to make sure that you're saving as much of the information in the highlights and roll off. And by using a curve instead of the contrast tool here in the primaries color wheels, you get a much better control over the image. You can really place exactly where you want your, your exposure to be and your contrast. 
For example, if I want to bury every part of this image into the dark and just keep some of that information in our skin like this, we can do that pretty easily here in the curve section. So that's a quite different feel from what we had before. Let's pick it up. Now we exposed a little bit different with more coverage into her, her skin here. And let's go forward. And now we have something like this. So I put my expansion of the contrast further up into her highlights and then pushed all of that shadows or mid range down into the shadows. So I hope you can see that this is a really powerful tool to, to really control your, your image in a very fine and precise manner. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful to you. Maybe you get some new insights into how contrast and highlight and shadow roll off is somehow intertwined. That is all I have for now. I will see you in the next one. Bye.